Some of the most fun that I've had shooting photos has been after the sun has gone down during blue hour. But to show you what I mean, I'm gonna walk you through my start to finish process of how I took this photo and turned it into this photo, this photo, and even this photo. But maybe you don't have any blue hour photos that you've shot yourself. Well, that's okay, because if you have any photos that were shot in cloudy conditions or during overcast, you should still be able to follow along with the techniques that I'm showing you in this video. For now, let's jump into step one, which is fixing the white balance of our photo. Because if you shoot in blue hour and you're like me, there's a good chance your photo turned out a little bit too blue, but that's okay because you're a subscriber of this channel and you know that you should be shooting photos in raw, which means we can easily grab our color temperature and just, just warm it up a little bit. Again, you don't wanna to go too much. Another option you have is you can grab this custom and say auto and that's just Lightroom guessing. But most of the time when it comes to blue hour photos, it doesn't quite get it right. So I'm actually gonna grab that and maybe put it at around 8,000. I think in my case, that looks pretty good. One of the techniques that you might notice in this photo is that the water is nice and smooth. And that's because I actually did a long exposure. And if I hit info, I on my keyboard, you can see that it is a 15 second exposure at F16. Now you can actually tell it's F16 because if you take a closer look, at these starbursts, you can only get those when you're shooting at that really high aperture number. And the number, fun fact, the number of points, stars that you see in your photo actually corresponds to the number of aperture blades, or it's twice as many, the number of aperture blades that you have in your camera lens, fun fact. Even though this is a long exposure, I do feel like it's a bit underexposed. It, it's a bit too dark. So step two is I'm gonna grab my exposure and just up it ever so slightly. Before we move on to the main edits, I really wanna clean up this photo. I, I don't like all of the footsteps that are in the sand. So I'm gonna grab my masking tool and just start brushing them out. Now, it's funny because right before we shot this photo, there was a guy walking down the beach. So I guess he's to blame for the footprints, but he was walking towards the bridge, which I thought was a little bit funny because the tide was coming in and there was basically no beach left over. So unless he knew something that we didn't, the, the only thing I can assume is that he just ended up in, in the ocean or I don't know. It's the thing I'm trying to really do here is really get rid of all those footprints, get rid of all the, the little twigs and everything, just just because I want it to look, look a little bit smoother. And then I'm gonna jump into masking, which is gonna allow me to tweak some areas, maybe where I don't want as much detail or maybe where I want a little bit more of exposure. Now, with blue hour photography, the advantage you have is that the lighting is very consistent, both in terms of color temperature and in terms of the softness of the shadows. So that's gonna allow me to go in and maybe add a bit more contrast. Like, like here, I'm going to use a luminance range to select some of the darker areas of, of the rocks. And I think I'm just gonna drop the exposure on those. But also the cliff on the right-hand side of the image is, is maybe a bit too, too detailed. So I'm maybe I'll, I'll brush in a little bit or even just do a, a radial gradient to darken some of those areas. Again, this is gonna be very photo specific. In my case, I also want to brighten up the bridge and maybe pull a little bit more of the detail out of it. So we'll up the exposure and we'll also up the clarity. One more thing that I do wanna do is I'm gonna do a mask that is specifically for the sand. Once I've got that brush, I'm going to jump down and maybe drop the texture and the clarity a little bit, but then also boost the exposure because I do want the sand, it, it feels a little bit dark. And I think if we match it with the ocean and with the water a little bit, it, it'll feel a little bit nicer. And then I'm gonna create this brush that is just selecting the water do the same thing, I think, and maybe drop the clarity just, just to give the water a little bit more smoothness. Again, you don't wanna overdo the clarity. It's just minor tweaks to, to push and pull the various portions of your composition. I will jump a little bit ahead of myself and I'm gonna make a mask that just selects the bridge. And I'm gonna jump into the point color tool, which I'll explain how that works in a little bit, but I do find the bridge is a little bit too orange. So I can simply grab it and then just drag this so that, you know, it's not, not 
too crazy, but just a little bit more red. We are going for a moody blue hour look, but sometimes it's too moody and we want specific elements to pop. So in this case, the Golden Gate Bridge, we really want those reds to stand out. One of the tools that you have to use with a lot of responsibility is the sharpness tool. With, with great power comes great responsibility as, as Uncle Ben would say. You can grab the sharpness and just start sliding it right away, but I actually like to hit the Alt key and it reveals this mask, which shows me the areas of my image that I'm affecting. Then what I'll do is I'll drag the sharpness so that I'm only sharpening the areas where I want more detail. So in, in this case, the bridge and some of the edges of the objects. At this point, the base edit of your photo is complete and you have a little bit of a decision to make. Like which direction do you want to take your photo? Do you want to take it in a more saturated, more blue kind of moody blue hour look? Or do you want it to be a little bit more desaturated? My tip is to try different presets. So whether you have my presets, which you can pick up down in the description, or you even just use the Lightroom presets that come built in. I like to start with my Ivory Ridge preset because it looks a little bit more neutral, but then, you know, maybe something like Hot Cider, which kind of is a little bit more green and a little bit more orange. Maybe that's not quite the look that I'm going for. One of the ones that I showed you at the beginning was Fire Route 74. And I specifically showed you that one because it desaturates the blues and really pulls out the red tones, which for this composition, of course, makes sense. And if you find you're using presets, but they're not quite working on your photo, there are two or three things you can try. The first is adjusting your white balance. So some presets are designed to work with a specific white balance with specific colors. If it's too intense, you can also try dropping the intensity slider, or if maybe it's too bright or too dark, you can grab the exposure slider so that that way the, 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 like the tone curves that are built into that preset are affecting your image in the right way. But if you are looking for a moody blue hour preset, if you watch to the end of this video, the photo that we're editing right now actually inspired one of the presets that will be in my upcoming preset pack. So if you wanna be one of the first to get your hands on that or get notified when that launches, make sure you sign up using the links down in the description. At this point, because of the presets, we have a pretty good idea of what's gonna work and maybe what needs a little bit more work in our photo. So I'll actually go back and start making some minor tweaks for exposure, for highlights, for shadows to really nail down the looks and the tonal range of this image before we jump into our next step, which is getting the colors looking the way we want them to look. At this point, I'm going to jump into my point curve and start making a few tweaks because I feel like this photo should have a little bit more of a, like a flat, maybe a little bit less contrasty look. So I'm gonna raise the black point. I'm gonna lower the white point. Again, this is a blue hour photo, so it doesn't have a ton of white information. Most of the color, most of the tonal range is gonna be in that mid tone or, or in that gray range. But you can really finesse this based on how bright or how dark your photo is. When you're ready to adjust the colors in your image, you're gonna do that under the color mixer where you have your hue, your saturation, and your luminance. Now, if the color in your photo is completely off, you might need to go back and actually tweak the white balance first. In my case, I think I'm gonna desaturate some of these blue tones, again, for that kind of like moody blue hour look. If you wanna go for a more saturated look, you could do the opposite, where you maybe saturate the blues and drop the warm tones, but I'll show you another way to do that that I think works better in just a bit. One thing I do wanna do is adjust the luminance of the beach. I feel like it's a bit too dark. The sand is still a bit too dark, so I could adjust my mask. I, I could also just drag the luminance of the orange up. I, I feel like that's maybe too harsh, and if I jump into point color, I can select it, kind of narrow down my range and do do the same sort of a thing, but you might notice it's also now affecting the colors and the oranges on the bridge. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna go and create a mask that just selects the sand. And I can be pretty loose with this. The brush doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's just selecting the beach area and not the bridge. And then I think I'll go in and just play with the luminance and the saturation just to get this to a point where I'm happy and I feel like it maybe matches the luminosity and the intensity of, of the ocean just, just, just a little bit better. I'm looking at the sky and I feel like it could be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna create another mask and maybe just 
tweak the, the tone curves to, to pull out a little bit more contrast. But when we were shooting 10 minutes before this, there was a guy kind of up on one of the ridges of, of the rocks. And it looked like he'd kind of like fallen down a portion of the rock when like you can't climb up these, like they're, they're super steep. And we're watching him against the sun setting and we're like, how, how where is he gonna go? Like he can't go back up because it's now dark and he can't see anything. And he can't see where he's going because he doesn't know where the beach is. And so one minute we see him and the next minute he just completely vanishes. And we're like, oh my gosh, did, did we just witness someone falling to their death? So we're walking back along the beach. It's now dark because it's past sunset, past blue hour. And this guy randomly appears on the beach behind us. And we're like, oh my gosh, did this, where did this, this guy has no camera. He has no flashlight. He was holding his cell phone and just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And he goes, hey guys, how'd you get down here? <laughs> and we were like, we took the, tr the trail <laughs> to get down here because we certainly didn't do whatever you just did. And the guy looks all disheveled, like he's rolled down a cliff or, or whatever. So he starts, he starts following us and we're like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> so we end up telling him like, yeah, the, the trail is, is that way down the beach. And so he goes, oh, thanks. And just runs off, which he obviously had no idea where he was going. So hopefully if you're that guy and you're watching this, you made it back, back in time before it was just completely dark and the, the tide came in. Once you're happy with all the adjustments that you've made for exposure, for masking, for white balance, it is now time for the most fun part of editing inside of Lightroom color grading. One option if you're going for that super moody blue hour effect is to add blue to the shadows. You could also darken them for more contrast. I wouldn't lighten them because that will flatten the photo out at this point. And then you'd want to contrast that with maybe a different color in, in the mid-tones. In my case, I don't know if orange in the mid-tones is quite doing it. So I'm actually going to flip this around where I'm going to say, you could go full blue and just make it look like that. But again, maybe you're not keeping some of that reddish tone that we had used to achieve earlier. So I'm actually gonna flip the shadows, maybe try that. And the key is really just finding complementary colors that work for the composition, for that moody blue hour look that you're going for. And because I have a lot of warm tones in the highlights around these street lights, I'm actually gonna neutralize that by adding maybe a little bit of teal back into those highlights. Again, you could go really crazy and you can see how all of a sudden it pulls a lot more blue in those areas. And then if you were to give it more of a flat look, we'll pull those white tones down and allow them to get really saturated. So it's really just a matter of finding what works for you. You know, you can play with the blending to maybe blend the colors a little bit more. Or let's say you wanted more orange. Well, at this point I could drag my balance to the left and that would give it a more orange, more moody, moody? I don't know, what's moody, orange or blue? I think they're kind of both moody. Or you could go the other way and you'd be pulling a lot more of the blues into those gray tones. One more bonus tip. If you go back up to our tone curves and you jump into the RGB tone curves, let's say you wanted even more blue for whatever reason. If you were to take the blue tone curve and just bump the mid tones, that makes everything blue, almost too much blue. So I'm gonna undo that. And then I'm going to take this little color picker. And there are two uses for this. One is you can pin colors that you're happy with. So let's say I'm happy with my beach because I put all that work into the sand. I'm going to pin it. And then let's say I also wanna keep my shadows relatively the same color. So I'm gonna pin one of these rocks. But let's say I want more blue in the sky. Well, if I grab the same tool and I just go over the clouds, and I start to raise it up, you can see what it's doing with my tone curve. It's effectively adding way more blue in all of those gray cloudy sky areas. So instead of having to guess where on the tone curve you need to push and pull, simply grabbing that tool and playing with the RGB tone curves is one way to get hundreds of different looks out of your photos. But let's say now that's too much blue and you go back to your color mixer and you start to desaturate the blue. Well it gets rid of 
most of the blue, but you can see because we created that adjustment with the tone curve, it still allows us to add blue back. So sometimes your adjustments fight against each other, especially if you've used a preset and you're not sure how that preset works because maybe there's a tone curve adjustment in there and you're trying to desaturate things and it's just not doing what you were expecting. But if you happen to be looking for a versatile set of Lightroom presets, you can always check out mine linked down in the description below. That helps me out and supports this channel and allows me to make more videos like this. And if you wanna see those videos, you can check them out in this playlist right here. Or if you wanna learn about Overcast, shooting photos in Overcast versus shooting photos in Golden Hour, you can check out last week's video right here. And until the next one, grab your camera, go shoot photos.